today we're going to remove and install the set of sights on the Sphinx SDP. As you can see, we have the firearm field stripped and the slide clamped in a protected vise. We're going to begin by loosening the set screws on the rear sight with the appropriate hex key. As you can see, those screws are a little snug if you put a wrench on and try to force it and it doesn't move. Rather than strip out the screw or the wrench, get a soldering iron and apply a little bit of heat to that screw. If there's any Loctite, that'll soften it up and make your life quite a bit easier. We're going to take a hammer and a punch and drift the factory site out of the dovetail. Now we can take the new rear sight and dry fit it. As you can see, it's a little snug coming in from that direction. We'll go ahead and try the other side just in case. All right, still a little too snug. We're going to go ahead and use a file and take just a little bit of material off the site. All right, now that we've removed the factory site, we can begin the installation of the rear site. We're going to start by checking to see that it just start. Ideally, we want it to go about halfway into the dovetail before we drive it in place. If you want to, you can always check it from the other side. Sometimes dovetails wear a little bit differently when the factory sites are driven in place with the hydraulic press and then when we drive them out. Either way you look at it, this still needs to have a little bit of material removed. Set the site down on the file, make a pass one way, give it 180 degrees, take another pass. And then check it. Since this is a no vac-ish type rear site, we actually want to, when we get it started in the dovetail, take a look at it from the side and make sure that we've got plenty of clearance. kind of hard with the camera angle, but what we're checking is to make sure that we have clearance from this flat surface here at the back of the slide and this particular surface of the site. If you take too much material from the bottom of the site, you actually create an interference there, which will not allow for the installation of the site. We still have clearance. We're going to go ahead and take a little more material. Still not wanting to go, still have clearance, we can take a little bit more. Okay, I've still got a little bit of clearance, probably five, six thousandths, uh, enough to see some daylight, but I still need to remove material. At this point, I'm going to need to find a dovetail file. Like I said, we've checked when, when we put the side in, we're looking at this surface where the wrench is touching now, and this particular surface that I'm touching on the side. Since I've got clearance, but not much, it's still not fitting. I'm going to have to remove material somewhere else. We're going to use a dovetail file and we're going to be removing material from this particular angled face. Uh, it's a little harder than say this face to work on, however once it's installed on the firearm everything's cleaned and degreased and we apply the thread locker we're going to create a seal so that will prevent any corrosion from being able to form there. Uh, it will also ensure that you know that particular face of the site that's going to be bare steel isn't visible. And that's why we're going to work on that point. We're going to use a dovetail file. If you're not familiar with them, the dovetail file is a triangular shaped file, as you can see, with two safe edges and one cutting edge. 
Dovetail files come in a variety of degree. This particular file, I believe, is a 65. Nope, my, my mistake, it's a 60. It's actually engraved on the, in the file, that's how I can tell. I'm going to come in, put it in place like I want to remove material, and then look at it to make sure that I'm happy with the angles that it's going to cut. And then I'm going to slowly and carefully remove material. As you can see, I've had some material removal here on that angled face. I'm going to go ahead and check it. Starts in just fine. It goes about three quarters under finger pressure, which is okay. I'm going to go ahead and push it back out and clean and degrease both the sight using a Q-tip and some degreasing agent. Clean and degrease all of this. Take the other end, get a little more degreaser. And go ahead and hit the female dovetail cut. Alright. Get the slide the site started. Hammer and a punch. Tap it in till it's just sitting in the center. Take the hex key and just snug the set screw. Take the red thread locker. Apply it everywhere. And we'll let that sit for three or four minutes and clean off what does not creep into the dovetail. All right, we've given that thread locker a few minutes to creep in. We'll go ahead Take a new Q-tip and wipe off the excess that did not work its way in. And we are finished with the rear sight. It's time to work on the front sight. We're going to begin, same as we did on the rear. We've disassembled the gun, got it clamped in the vise. We have to back off this set screw using the appropriate hex key. It's pretty snug, but I got it. Again, if it's real tight and you can't get any movement out of it, rather than turning your hex key into a pretzel, get a soldering iron, let it get hot, and just apply a little bit of heat to the screw. That'll soften up the Loctite and make life easy. All right, that's not going to come out with finger pressure. We're going to have to persuade it a little bit, so we'll take a hammer and a punch. Notice I'm using a, a plastic punch in this case. Uh, you know, this slide's Cerakoted. We don't want to tear anything up. So the plastic isn't going to hurt the site or the slide. Okay. 
factory side is removed. I'm going to take a quick look, make sure I don't have any Loctite dirt or debris in there as an obstruction, and start the installation of the new front sight. As you can tell, we dry fit everything to make sure that it was all going to fit like we wanted. It does. Go ahead and remove the sight from the slide, get a Q-tip and our degreasing agent. We're going to go ahead and hit the dovetail in the slide. As you can see, it's knocking out chunks of the Loctite that they used from the factory. Take the other end and a little more degreasing agent. And we're going to clean the contact surfaces on the slide. I mean, uh, on the site, front site. Okay. We also need to locate the front site screw that was included in the packaging. So we are going to decrease it as well. The easiest thing to do on something like that, we're going to go ahead and put it on the hex key. It's a little easier to hang on to that way. Take the Q-tip with a little bit of degreasing agent and just carefully roll that screw around it to kind of clean it and make sure there's no oil. We're all clean, dried, ready for final assembly. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of red thread locker down in the dovetail. As well as a drop on the screw. Okay. We've applied the thread locker down into the dovetail of the site. We don't really want to put it on the screw. It's a little screw if we ever need to remove it for any reason. The screw uh, <laughs> wouldn't come loose with that Loctite on it. It's entirely too small. All right. I don't know if you guys can see in this video. There's a little pocket on the back end of this dovetail, on the shear side of this dovetail. When we put the replacement front side in there, we want to try and center that little hole over that pocket so when we put the set screw in it goes into that pocket centers up and holds everything in place for, while that Loctite sets up. All right. That's going to require using a Q-tip to remove what I just squished out. And it's a cut point socket set screw. If you're pretty close, the point of that should find that little depression in there. Since it's kind of cut at a little bit of a bevel, it should identify it and self-center itself. Snug it up with finger pressure. And come in and clean off the excessive Loctite. Ready to put it back together, take it to the range and see how she shoots.